So, um, well, today I would like to um, talk to you about the isotropic stable motivic homotopy category. And in particular, I would like to present the, the structure of the endomorphism of the unit objects in, inside this category, uh, which I call the isotropic sphere spectrum. Well, but before getting to, to this isotropic category stuff, then maybe uh, I will just give a brief introduction uh, just to explain a bit of motivation, but yeah, also mainly to introduce some notation. So, uh, yeah, let me start with this. So, uh, in this talk, I will mainly consider the stable motivic commodity category with a field K, which I denote in this way. Sometimes I will also say something about the Vodsky category of motives. Uh, yeah over k. I mean, I will not write it, but uh, everywhere I will assume uh, zimo 2 coefficients. Uh, well, right. Then uh, I will denote in this way the motivic homology of the spectrum of the base field, which uh, is resolved by Vevolsky, essentially is the proof of Milner conjecture. This is the Milner k theory of k modulo 2 with one polynomial generator tau, which is in by degree zero. I'm sorry, where do you assume Z mode two coefficients? Uh, in uh, here, in the triangulated category of, model. well, maybe I should say characteristic of K different from two. And uh, I assume that everything, uh, when I talk about motivic homology and uh, in the triangulated category of motives, everything is with zero two coefficients. Okay, so motives and motivic homology. Yes, um, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, no and SH is integral, right? I'm sorry? And the SH category is integral. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Okay. Okay, cool. So this is, well, the uh, motivic homology of the point. And then uh, also maybe I will need the motivic Steinrod algebra. All right, so I will denote this in this way. So while this is the algebra of by stable uh, motivic homology operation, so I mean, maybe defined or uh, as the endomorphism of the eilenberg maclean spectrum. I mean, the structure of this algebra is an algebra over the motivic homology of the point is essentially could be described in this way. So it's generated by some steroid squares. Uh, well, modulo some motivic Adam relations. Uh, yes, well, these uh, motivic Adam relations are very similar to the topological uh, Adam relations, but it may happen that, um, well, tau appears in the relations and uh, I mean, even um, rho, the class of minus one in the Milner key theory mod two appear, appears in the relations. But uh, if inside the motivic Adam relations, we plug rho equal zero and tau equal one, then we get the usual uh, topological Adam relations. So I will not write them, but okay. And then one, uh, if one wants to compute the, the stable motivic homotopy groups of the sphere spectrum, for example, there is as in topology, a motivic Adams, motivic. spectral sequence. So yeah, as classical, this approximates the, the stable motivic homotopy groups of the sphere spectrum by some uh, cohomological data. So we have that the E2 page uh, is given by the X over the motivic standard algebra of the cohomology of the Okay, and this converges to the, I mean, stable motivic homotopy groups of the sphere spectrum completed at the Eilenberg-Maclean spectrum. Okay, 
Uh, well, now let me for a moment consider the base field, field of complex number. Okay, in this case, we have that these spectral sequences uh, strongly convergent. This is a result by Dagger Isaacson. And um, well, okay. And in this case, I mean, we have that uh, the tau is an element of, uh, of this X in uh, uh, Adam's filtration zero. And by degree reason, it survives to the infinity page. So we actually get a map from well, zero minus one. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, here everything is completed at zero two. This is two. And then we can consider the five, the cone of this map inside SHK. That we'll call this, this way. Okay. So this is H two, one minus one. Okay, so the name of this is just cofiber of yeah, of tau, whatever. Okay, so uh, now we have for complex number we have a topological realization factor which goes from the stable motivic homotopy category to the usual topological stable homotopy category, it's topological realization. And uh, right, well, this topological realization acts um, essentially by sending this tau to one. So I mean, it sends tau to one. So, uh, well, we have that the motivic cohomology of the point, which in this case is just this polynomial, is time to just F2, the singular cohomology of the point. Then we have that the motivic steroid algebra is sent to the usual topological steroid algebra. And uh, if we want to see what happens to this cofiber of tau, well, uh, since tau, uh, it sends to the identity, this becomes an isomorphism here, so C tau vanishes. Right, okay, so this topological realization functor um, somehow um, captures the information about this operation of sending tau to one, so it's kind of studying the uh, well, the fiber to equal, uh, yeah, to equal one of this uh, stable motivic comotopy category, but then one could ask what happens to uh, to equal zero, which is an information which is clearly uh, like lost in the passage uh, by using topological realization. Right, and uh, well, the idea is that this uh, all this information is contained in the motivic spectrum C tau. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, and in fact, I mean, several people have studied this motivic spectrum, so I will uh, see maybe for some results. So we have, for example, a result by Isaacson, which computed the stable motivic homotopy groups of this motivic spectrum, C tau. And these are identified with the X over this Hopf algebraid. Well, B star, BP star. So here, uh, BP is just the topological Brown-Peterson spectrum. And uh, well, here we have the dual of the BP Steenrod algebra and here homotopy groups of this Brown-Peterson spectrum. So this is, uh, well, it's nothing else but the E2 page of the uh, classical Adams Novikov spectral sequence. Right, so we get, I mean, Isaacson uh, proved this what well, did this very interesting computation, which I mean, these uh, stable motive comotopy groups are completely computed, and uh, well, they are this uh, this x, so they are identified with this. Then uh, George proved that uh, C tau 
is a motivic infinity ring spectrum. And uh, so, I mean, the stable motivic homotopy groups of this infinity ring spectrum are uh, kind of enriched with some extra structure. It's a ring and it has also some higher structure in terms of higher products. And uh, well, it proves that this isomorphism proved by, um, well, yeah, obtained by Isaacson, it actually, uh, it's not only additive, but it respects these higher products. So, the previous. Also, uh, respects the higher structure. Good. And then, um, well, since we have this motivic infinity ring spectrum, one could consider the, um, yeah, the category of uh, C-tau modules. And if one focuses only on, uh, on the cellular part, then we have result by George Wong Su. So, and they essentially prove, well, with some care, maybe I will not say it too precisely, but if we consider C tau models and we take just the cellular part, so yeah, but localizing subcategory generated by C tau and suspensions, and then we, here we, well, with some boundaries, maybe. Yes, this is uh, identified as a stable infinity category to the derived category founded of BP star BP. One, sorry. Commodus. Uh, right, concentrated in, yeah, even degrees. So, well, nice. So this is kind of, yeah, it's completing a bit the picture because we get that the cellular part of this uh, stable infinity category, C tau mod, is algebraic in its nature. And it's just the derived category of commodules over this, uh, well, op algebraic. Right, now the doubt could be, uh, what does this have to do with the isotropic categories? And uh, well, I will explain in this talk, I hope it will be clear by the end. So now, okay. okay. Well, now, yeah, maybe just a bit more, okay. Yeah, now we'll talk about isotropic. Yeah. Categories. Just a quick question. Yeah. All this business about tau is only for complex numbers. So, um, so I have to say that uh, for what I said, well, yes, because I mean we have that this tau actually uh, gets to the to the infinity page of the other spectral sequence, and I think it's it's used the fact that the field is uh, algebraically closed. So, uh, well, so maybe not complex numbers, but for sure algebraically closed. Although I know that there is a recent paper by uh, Bachmann, Kong, and uh, Wang Su, in which they kind of generalize this result, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know exactly uh, what of the picture is needed, but I guess that at least to consider that uh, map tau, uh, let me see. Yeah. Well, this one here between this, I mean, sphere, then uh, probably, yes, I think it's needed algebraically closed, I guess. But oh, you know, okay, I'm not yeah. entirely sh yeah, sure, I would say that. Yeah, at least the first time that it appeared, this theta was considered for complex numbers. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, uh, well, um, okay, right, so um, the, this, now we will present the uh, the compute uh, well the compute sorry the construction of the isotropic stable motivic homotopy category. So this is roughly speaking obtained by the usual stable motivic homotopy category by killing uh, the suspension spectra of uh, anisotropic varieties. Uh, well, this construction is, uh, I mean, follows the same construction that was done recently by Vishik. I mean, he starts with the uh, Wevotsky triangulated category of motives and then. Uh, well, he applies a certain construction, essentially a tensor uh, 
Vyvodsky category with the, with an idempotent, which kills all these uh, motives of anisotropic varieties. And then at the end, uh, it gets this isotropic category of motives. So essentially, I do the same. So I will present the, uh, the construction for the stable motive homotopy category because it's what I need, but the construction is essentially the same. So, okay, cool. First of all, I would now fix the base field to be of characteristic different from two and flexible. So this is a notation used by uh, Bishik. So uh, flexible field means just a um, purely transcendental extension of, I mean, infinite countable degree. So this, yeah, these fields are quite, I mean, um, yeah, it's quite comfortable to work with uh, with these fields if you want to pass to some uh, finally generated um, purely transcendental extension without losing, yeah, too many good things and properties. I would say. Okay, then we can consider Q is just the uh, disjoint union of uh, connected anisotropic. Uh, varieties over k. Uh, so here by anisotropic, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, maybe I will just write here. I mean, uh, uh, smooth uh, scheme of finite type, which uh, doesn't F uh, closed points of a degree. Sorry, of a degree. So it's essentially a mod to an isotropic variety, I would say. Okay. And then we can apply to this, I mean, this is a scheme with infinitely many components. We can apply to this scheme with a check construction. So this is a check simplicial scheme, and on the n level. Uh, it is just the product of Q and plus one. And then we have that uh, phase maps are uh, partial projections and coffees, uh, no, sorry, not coffees, the generous maps are partial diagonals. Well, this construction is very similar to the uh, topological construction of EG. So for example, if yeah, you want to uh, construct the classifying space of a group, topological group G, then you take the EG construction and then you mod out the action by, uh, by G. But then, uh, I mean, this EG is essentially this construction. And uh, Right, the, the main difference is that in topology, this EG is always contractible. And the situation in the motivic uh, picture is a bit different because we have that in general, the check simplicial scheme, CX is contractible. Uh, if and only if X has a k-rational point. So essentially this checks in visual schema uh, measure, measures uh, how X is far from getting a k rational point. And in our case, clearly, I mean, this checks in visual scheme is not contractible because we are taking an isotropic variety. So they don't have k rational points for sure. And well, um, okay. So let me denote by K prime, the suspension spectrum of this checks in visual scheme. Uh, right, then, mm, I mean, we have projection from this check simplicial scheme to, uh, to the base point, and we can consider in uh, uh, SHK this distinguished triangle, uh, the sphere spectrum. And here I consider the cone, which I will denote this way. Right, so this I will call isotropic sphere spectrum. Spectrum. 
Okay, so maybe the first thing that I want to say is why the reason for this name, maybe. Um, so consider some anisotropic variety over, over K, then we have clearly a map from P to Q. But uh, we know that, uh, I mean, the map from this check simplicial scheme times uh, for this variety to P. Uh, I mean, this map in general, for general P and Q, this is a, um, a simplicial weak equivalence if and only if there is a map from P to Q. And since in our case, we have such a map, then we know that this is a simplicial weak equivalence. Well, in particular, I mean, if we go to the uh, stable motivic commutative category, we get that uh, chi prime smash, uh, right, uh, expansion spectrum of P is isomorphic, is the same, is identified with, yeah, with this. But then now, uh, if we apply to this distinguished triangle here, uh, I mean, we, we smash everything with uh, with suspension spectrum of an isotropic variety, then we get that this first map will become an isomorphism and then the second is zero. So, yeah, in this sense, I mean, I kills anisotropic varieties. Okay. So, okay. Well, uh, now we may consider, let's write just this name, two functors from SHK to SHK, then L is given by smashing with this isotropic sphere spectrum. And well, C, I mean, we are less interested in C, but let me write it is meshing with yeah, this other spectrum. Okay, maybe a few uh, um, information about this uh, this spectra. So uh, k prime is an idempotent. And then it is orthogonal to chi, and also chi is an idempotent. Yes. So I mean, the distinguished triangle before um, gives a semi-orthogonal decomposition of the of the stable motivic commutative category. We have this orthogonal idempotence, right? And then essentially, this uh, well, yeah. Clearly, we have some distinguished triangles. Like this, but mostly L is a localization factor. Well, and C is co localization. Although, I mean, we'll not really use this. Okay, uh, well, what one needs to check essentially is that, uh, well, L is equivalent to L square. I mean, and this comes from the fact that chi is an idempotent. So smashing twice is the same as just applying L once. And then uh, it morphisms from X and uh, Ly are identified with Lx, Ly. Well, and then there is also a third property, which probably is not the yeah, not really essential, but I can write this. So if this is zero, then it's also zero for all y. Right, okay. Um, now we can consider this full triangulated subcategory of uh, SHK, which is just obtained by smashing with this idempotent, with this isotropic sphere spectrum. Okay, this is the isotropic stable motivic homotopic category. Okay. 
Okay, the unit object here is just this isotropic sphere spectrum. And I mean, this category has very nice properties. It is both uh, localizing and co-localizing. Um, well, it's um, co-localizing just by formal reasons. Uh, and uh, it's localizing since L is a uh, smashing localization factor because it's obtained just by smashing with an idempotent. So it preserves also uh, arbitrary co-products. So. Right. Okay. Then maybe just uh, well, this is about localizing and co-localizing. Co -localizing. Well, in Brover, um, I mean, if you have uh, yeah, such a diagram. Zero and all these objects are isotropic spectra. So they are in this um, subcategory. Uh, then uh, the homotopy limit of this xi is in. Uh, right. So essentially disclosed, uh, yeah, undertaking this uh, sequential homotopy limits. Okay. Okay, now just maybe a uh, quick remark on what I was telling before. This is essentially the same construction as for the isotropic category of motives. And uh, this can be defined by applying the motive uh, of chi essentially by tensoring the Vodsky category of motives. Right, with this. Uh, motive of the isotropic sphere spectrum, which is an idempotent. And essentially all the, uh, yeah, all the properties that I've said till now, they, all, yeah, they also hold for, for this uh, isotropic category of motives. Essentially everything comes from very formal reasons just by working on these uh, triangulated categories with localization functors. So, yeah. Of motives. Yeah. Um, okay, so now, well, we have in this situation, we have said that we have this functor L, since it, I mean, it uh, applies this and it smashes with this uh, isotropic spectrum, this actually goes to the isotropic category this is a sort of isotropic realization factor. And now we would like to understand a bit I mean, what does this uh, isotropic realization factor. Clearly it simplifies lots of things because it, it kills all anisotropic varieties. And uh, well, maybe I will just first say that in this isotropic motivic category, um, yeah, we can define isotropic stable motivic homotopy groups. Yeah, this is just very naturally. Right, and this is just usual stable motivic homotopy groups, but of this, yes, as I expect, so yeah, let's write that X is in SHK. Okay, and then also, uh, isotropic motivic homology of X. And this is so essentially it's the cohomology theory represented by this spectrum chi veg uh, um, smash H zero two. Okay, right. Now uh, Vishik in his uh, paper computed the, the isotropic um, motivic homology of the point. So this is a result by Vishik. So the isotropic motivic homology of the point, which I will denote in this way, is essentially an exterior algebra where F2 in generators are i for i greater or equal than zero. And uh, I mean, these are in by degree minus two to the i plus one, minus two to the i plus one, plus one. 
And um, right, essentially these are uh, kind of determined these generators by the action of Milner operations on them. So we have the QI RJ is delta J. Okay, where, yeah, QI R, the Milner operations. Okay, so uh, well, let's see now what happens to the, uh, for example, um, motivic homology if we apply the isotropic localization factor. So we get a map from the motivic homology of K to this isotropic motivic homology. And I mean, I would just draw this picture, which looks clear. So here we have, I mean, this is like topological degree and this is motivic weight. Then we have uh, the Milner key theory here, mod two. And then we have here tau, and here, I mean, multiplication is just isomorphism here, so it's here. Instead in the, in the isotropic motivic homology, we have this here one, and then we have R0, R1, R0, one, and yeah, this, bunch of points in this third quadrant. But then just by degree reasons, it's obvious that this uh, morphism kills everything, but uh, I mean the identity in, uh, so in by degree uh, zero, zero. So the most important thing that I want to highlight is that this isotropic realization factor, uh, I mean, sends tau to zero. Uh, yeah, so in particular, I mean, we get this situation is kind of analogous to the situation of C tau, uh, yeah, of the motivic spectrum C tau for complex numbers or algebraically closed, uh, in the sense that it kind of captures information related to this uh, fiber uh, of the stable motivic homotopy category given by tau equals zero. Okay, so now the idea is that to study, so the goal is to study a bit the property of this, uh, so, yeah, to study a bit the property of this um, isotropic stable motivic homotopy category, and uh, well, maybe uh, try to uh, to compute um, at least or say something about the uh, stable motivic homotopy groups of the isotropic sphere spectrum. Now, the strategy is, I mean, it's classically. So, we first want to understand a bit better motivic homology operations in this isotropic environment, and then we would like to move to an isotropic version of the motivic Adam spectral sequence. And then, well, we first get some information on the E2 page, and then we look at differentials and see what can be said. So that's the general strategy. And uh, okay, so I'll start with isotropic motivic stereo algebra. Okay, the definition is very natural. I mean, I will denote it this way. And this is just endomorphism of this isotropic ellenberg maclean spectrum. Right, in order to understand uh, uh, yeah, better the structure of this, uh, okay. Yeah, I need to, introduce first some uh, auxiliary algebra. So, uh, well, maybe first I will, let me write. And just a quick question. Yeah. Have you already used somewhere that the field is flexible? I'm sorry? Have you already used the assumption ah, that yeah, the field sorry. is flexible? Yeah, uh, yes, yes. In the computation of the isotropic motivic homology of the, of the so. point, Vishik uses that the field is flexible. So actually the, the definition of the isotropic category itself, it doesn't need the, yeah, yeah. I I mean, the flexibility, so. but the, for the computation, you really need flexibility and you need uh, F, well, Z mod two coefficients. So mm -hmm. clearly one could do something similar for Z mod two coefficients, but there is some obstruction in the proof, which is not known for uh, P prime different from two. Okay. And is it now that if the field is not flexible, then the computer, I mean, the answer is different? Um, well, I don't know if it can be said that for sure it's different, but... 
Okay. Yeah, but in any case, we should use this crucial. Yeah, crucial for way. sure, yes, yes. Because okay. it's this passage to like finally generated uh, purely transcendental extension. And I mean, the fact that over flexible fields, if you, yeah, if you extend by a finally generated purely transcendental extension, you get some isomorphic field. That's the main idea. I think that it's used. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Okay, so. Okay, let me get back to this. So we have, yeah, you know, I've already written this, but let me get this again. And then relations, and then we have the dual of the motivic steroid algebra. Right. Yeah, maybe here. So, so it's an algebra over the homology of the point. It is generated by these elements tau zero, tau one. And then I have C1, C2, etc. And then there are some solution. Let me check. Okay, so I have two more one here. Right plus tau. C I plus one and plus rho. Yeah. So I plus one plus tau zero. C I plus one. So this should be correct. Okay, in any case, we have this structure as an algebra over the um, homology of the point. Okay, now I want to consider some uh, quotient of this algebra. Essentially, I want to uh, to kill all the uh, yeah, all the Milner K theory and powers of tau. Essentially, so I, I want to, yeah, uh, to, to do the quotient of this algebra uh, by the ideal generated by uh, elements of the mil, uh, well, of the motivic homology of the point in uh, by degree different from zero, zero. And essentially, I get this general, which I call the generalized Steinrod algebra. Which is kind of artificial. It's read this way, and so this is uh, maybe here. Okay, okay. This is an algebra of two algebra generated by these standard squares. But now I have some isotropic Adam relations. Uh, remember that, um, well, these isotropic ADM relations are obtained from the motivic ADM relations by plugging rho equal zero and tau equal zero. So these are slightly different from the, from the topological in which tau was sent to one. Uh, well, and the difference is probably even more clear from the dual because here we have, uh, well, tau is sent to zero, rho is sent to zero, so this disappears, and then we have just this exterior relation, tau i squared equals zero, so mm, this become, uh, well, maybe let me write it this way. This is a exterior algebra over f2, uh, sorry, and tau zero, tau one, etc. So we have these exterior generators, and then, uh, polynomial algebra, C1, C2. So this situation is definitely different from the uh, topological situation because the mod two Steinrod algebra uh, is the dual, which is just a polynomial algebra. But uh, yeah, if you if you remind from the from results by Milner, then uh, it's it's much more similar to the to the situation for um, topology, but with p prime different from two. So it's yeah. It's actually, I would say maybe here, similar to topology with uh, prime different from two. Well, um, similar. I have to say that probably it's exactly the same, but we are just substituting um, this FP coefficients with F2 coefficients. Okay, now uh, maybe I want to comment a bit on this uh, isotropic Adam relations and maybe some differences and uh, analogy with the usual one, which can 
make it clear why uh, this, this generalized serial algebra is useful in our case. So, um, well, so yeah. usual Adam relations are like this. C goes from zero to two, and then we have I don't really remember if it's minus, probably minus. Yeah. Let's see. Minus minus one, B minus two C. And then I have SQ A plus B minus C, SQ C. Well, yeah. Something like this. Okay, right. Now the isotropic, isotropic. Adam relations. So they are the same when one of the two uh, between A and B is odd. So if A or B is odd, they are the same. They are the same as topology. So the difference is for uh, A and B even. And in this case, uh, just very right, we get just contributes from even squares. But the formula is the same. Yeah, but just contributes from even squares. That's the only difference. So for example, if, yeah, let me just some examples. Uh, Where here I consider topology and here this isotropic, then let me write just this. Let's think. So this is zero and zero because I mean it's odd and it's the same as box time. And then here we have here sq3, sq1, but here I get zero because I have to take only. Um, yeah, contributes from even squares. And here there is SQ7, SQ1 plus SQ6, SQ2. And here I get to just SQ6, SQ2. Now I just want to highlight this, that the similarity between here and this. So which is essentially given by doubling the degree. And indeed we can consider this subalgebra of the generalized steroid algebra generated by even squares. So this is the part of A0 uh, which is concentrated on the slope to line. And uh, we have actually an isomorphism between this and the uh, uh, topological steroid algebra given by essentially uh, doubling, yeah, doubling the degree, right. So this is subalgebra of A0. So A0 contains uh, a, a subalgebra isomorphic to the topological zero algebra. And let's try to understand what's left. So we have Milner operations. In uh, in this generalized steroid algebra, they can be defined as classically. So by induction, I have that SQ0 is SQ1, and then, uh, sorry, Q0 is SQ1, and uh, QI plus one is defined as this commutator. So yeah, QI SQ2 to the I plus one plus QI. Right, and now this operation says in topology, they generate an exterior subalgebra of this uh, generalized steroid algebra. So I will just denote by this the Milner subalgebra. So this is zero, Q1, et cetera, et cetera. Right, and then we have that E0 star star. So this generalized steroid algebra is isomorphic to uh, well, this tensor product. 
So it contains a part which is uh, just the topological steroid algebra, and then it has this uh, Milner subalgebra. Uh, right, and moreover, there are some commutator formula uh, which allow to, to, I mean, shift Milner operations from operations coming from this G star star. And uh, well, one can notice that the, let's say, left ideal generated by Milner operations is actually two sided. And uh, I mean, if we take the quotient of this A0 modulo this ideal, then we get just the topological steroid algebra. Right. And now, why this is uh, useful in our situation? Uh, this is because I mean, one can prove that the isotropic steroid algebra is isomorphic to this tensor product. So we take the isotropic motivic homology of the point, we tensor over the motivic homology of the point and just with the usual motivic steroid algebra. And now remember that the morphism from, uh, from motivic homology to isotropic motivic homology kills all uh, everything but, but the identity. So in particular here we get isotropic motivic homology of the point tensor over F2 with this generalized steroid algebra. Yeah, if I want to write it better, then we have that in the isotropic motivic steroid algebra, we get contributes from the isotropic homology of the point, then from the Milner subalgebra, and then from the topological steroid algebra. Right, okay, so this is what I wanted to say about this. Uh, isotropic steroid algebra. So now that we have understood a bit better how these operations, motivic homology operations work in the isotropic environment, then one can focus on uh, isotropic Adams spectral sequence. So yeah, sorry. Okay. Right, so isotropic. Isotropic. Vic Adams spectral series. So the idea here is to take just the usual uh, motivic Adams spectral sequence and then uh, applying this isotropic realization factor. So essentially just by applying this um, isotropic sphere spectrum. So, okay. So we have this Postnikov system here. Uh, yeah, let me write this way. We take the fiber, then we apply uh, this. just a standard construction for the Adams tower. Right, we have these triangles here. And now we take this and we just uh, smash with isotropic sphere spectrum. And then we apply uh, stable motivic homotopy groups and we get an old exact couple, so which gives rise to, uh, yeah, to this spectral sequence. So D1 page is essentially U of uh, H02. Right, and notice that, I mean, this is just uh, isotropic homotopy groups of this spectrum. Okay, mm, yes, so essentially uh, as, uh, well, as in topology I would say, but also as in the motivic case, then one is able to, mm, yeah, to look uh, a bit better at uh, these homotopy groups. And well, this can be, it can be proved that this is just home. Um, 
t minus uh, then, no, yeah, it's probably t u. Yeah. Over the isotropic motivic steroid algebra from the uh, isotropic motivic homology of this spectrum, which is as one would expect, just this. Uh, tensor yes. and then to the isotropic cohomology of the point uh, sorry this is k over k right so then i mean the situation is very uh, like analogous to the to the classical one so in this case here we get a free resolution of the isotropic um, uh, motivic homology of the point uh, as a, a module over the isotropic motivic steroid algebra. And then we apply this ohm, so we get the natural description of the E2 page as uh, x as tu over the isotropic motivic steroid algebra, the isotropic motivic homology of the point. Okay, and then we have the convergence, I mean, conditional convergence. We don't know what happens to, to this spectral sequence uh, towards infinity, but we have conditional convergence to the stable motivic homotopy groups of the isotropic sphere spectrum completed at H two. Okay, uh, just uh, well, a small remark here. We have that this uh, completion, H2 completion of the isotropic sphere spectrum can be uh, well defined as a homotopy limit, as a sequential homotopy limit. And uh, remember that, I mean, all the, I mean, notice that all the, the spectra of this uh, like inverse system are isotropic spectra. And since the um, isotropic stable motivic homotopy category is closed under these sequential homotopy limits, we get that also this is an isotropic spectrum. So we are actually not leaving the, the isotropic category here. Can this be described as two eta completion or something like that? Ah, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, this is um, a result by Mantovani. So we have that uh, for a connective spectrum, and uh, I mean this guy is a connective spectrum because it's the is the cone of some some suspension spectra of some scheme. So uh, we have the description and of these as uh, yeah uh, sorry well yeah it's okay Twitter completion and. Um, well, moreover, I can tell you this, that uh, chi is too complete. Uh, so, uh, well, this is an argument that was suggested to me by, uh, by Tom Bachman. Uh, yeah, it's, it's related to the fact essentially that um, chi kills uh, uh, suspension spectra of anisotropic varieties, in particular, it kills uh, non-trivial uh, quadratic extensions. And uh, so by using uh, some, yeah, some arguments and the fact that quadratic extensions are killed by this chi, one can uh, be able to prove that chi is two power torsion. Yeah, like eight is zero, if I remember correctly. And then so this means that it's too complete. So we also have this. And uh, yeah, now we are- can Sorry, we... Can, can you say it again? You say that uh, chi is killed by eight? Oh. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. If I remember correctly, it should be so. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Ah, okay, so. Uh, okay. Okay, so now we get this, like, yeah, the description that one would expect for this uh, Adam spectral sequence. And the first idea is try to understand a bit better um, this structure of this X, I mean, this kind of complicated. So the idea, the first idea is to, uh, yeah, to simplify it somehow before uh, passing to study differentials. So usually differentials are the most difficult part. In our case, we are particularly lucky with this because it's 
it's not that hard. We just need to simplify this E2 page and then everything is smooth. So, okay, let me write, uh, okay, so. Okay, if this is the category of left G models, and then I can go to category of eight zero models and then to this category, right? And what I do here, uh, well, here there is just a tautological functor. I mean, remember, yeah, just remember that um, this G was the quotient of a zero model or some mm. ideal generated by Milner operations. And then here we just tensor over the generalized steroid algebra with this end. Right. Okay. This is an exact functor. So it induces this composition, it induces uh, morphisms from X. Uh, yeah, the same. Right, okay, we have this morphisms for all i, and then um, the thing is that when, um, I mean, under some mild assumption for uh, n prime, this is an isomorphism. So if n prime is bounded above, uh, well, which means that X is E zero such that uh, N prime uh, P Q is equal to zero for P greater or equal than P zero and all Q. And that's the thing. Then it is an ISO. Uh, ISO for all I, this thing. Um, right, I mean, this is uh, pretty much algebra. So uh, yeah, it comes from an understanding of these categories and relation between them. I will just maybe say uh, which are the ingredients. So the first reduction is, is easy. We have that this X over the uh, isotropic standard algebra of these modules. So. So the first reduction is easy because I mean, we have that the isotropic motivic steroid algebra is free over this generalized steroid algebra. And uh, so well, the first is kind of free. The second reduction is a bit, uh, yeah, streakier, but and we just write, so we have a uh, map from here. Then composition, we can go to this. And then we compose. And uh, I mean, for bounded and prime, but then this composition is an isomorphism. And uh, okay, so, well, the thing that is actually used is that a star star, k over k, which is isomorphic to, mm, Isotropic homology of the point F2 with then prime. Sorry, yeah. Is an injective uh, 
in the module. Yeah, and one uh, proves this thing. I mean, here we need the boundedness of, uh, of n prime and uh, well, one proves this injectivity as a model over the universal algebra just by using a Bayer uh, criterion. So yeah, just checking uh, on the inclusion of ideals on the universal algebra. Uh, well, and this allows the simplification. And the rough idea is that, uh, well, here this uh, tensor product, which can be reduced in this case, and then we have that somehow at least morally this isotropic homology of the point, uh, yeah, even by the result of Vishik is this kind of inverse to, to the Milner uh, subalgebra. So we get this possibility to simplify this. And here we have that this is tensor product of Milner subalgebra and uh, topological steroid algebra, so this G, and then we get this simplification. So at the end, this anisomorphism. Well, uh, yeah. Not going into details. I mean, it's it's algebra, but uh, what maybe um, I can say that if we consider the particular case in which uh, n is equal n prime, which is equal to f two, then we get that next stu. Here I will also write the internal pedigree. So this x, which is the E2 page of the isotropic Adam spectral sequence, is isomorphic to x stu f2, f2. So we get a big simplification of this uh, E2 page. And in particular, remember that um, this g is uh, spread on the slope to line. So it has, I mean, um, it has elements which have topological degree, which is twice the motivic weight. So it's trivial elsewhere and it's uh, isomorphic to the topological steroid algebra. So here we get this picture, we get X over the topological steroid algebra, S U F2, F2, this if T is equal to, to U and zero, this is different. And I mean, this is just the E2 page of uh, the classical Adams spectral sequence. So this is cohomology of the topological steroid algebra sequence. Right. Okay. So no, now we have like a bit clearer picture in this E2 page. And uh, one can look at differentials, but here we are lucky, as I said before, because differential in the uh, Adam spectral sequence are of f three degrees given by this, and so for r greater or equal than two, they are vanishes. Well, this is essentially due to the fact that this uh, X, so this E2 page as, uh, I mean, is non-trivial only for T equal to two U. So if R is greater or equal than two, then uh, the motivic weight is fixed, but the topological weight changes. So we get triviality. I mean, or it starts from zero or it gets to zero. Um, anyway, we have that this isotropic um, Adam spectral sequence collapses at the second page, so it is strongly convergent in particular. And we have this identification of the um, isotropic uh, stable motivic homotopy groups of this isotropic sphere spectrum with this uh, X, so with this E2 page of the Adam spectral sequence. So we get that, uh, maybe I will write this way. Isomorphic to um, okay. So now, I mean, this is another analogy with the CTAO picture over uh, complex numbers because we get that. Uh, while the stable motivic homotopy groups of uh, CETA were identified with the two page of the Adams Novikov spectral sequence, here we get this identification with the two page of the Adams spectral sequence. And this seems, well, this seems to come uh, 
yeah, for this uh, isotropic realization factor by the fact that we are killing tau. So we are looking at this kind of factor. Okay, maybe continuing the analogy. Okay. Yeah, maybe I will also draw a bit of picture because uh, this, uh, I mean, X can be computed by yeah, computers. I mean, there are computation of this and so, I mean, maybe I, will, I can draw some picture at least. So this is P equal Q, this is P equal to Q. And so we have that here, it's trivial. And we have that this X is, uh, well, these uh, stable motive homotopy groups are concentrated in this, this cone. And in here, in by degree one, one, we have H zero, which is an omnipotent element in this X, so H two, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I mean, H zero belongs to this one, one. Uh, uh, but then, I mean, we have this map. And if you apply homotopy groups, then oh, sorry. So it sends uh, eta to the n, which is non nilpotent element in the Milner K theory to, to this H zero in the X of the topological symmetry. Right. Okay, so we have these vanishing regions. Maybe this is enough. Um, okay, now I would like to comment a bit more on the higher structure of chi, because remember that uh, after, uh, I mean, Isaacs and approved the isomorphism uh, of these uh, homotopy groups of C tau with the E2 page of the Adams number of spectral sequence, then Georg proved that this isomorphism is actually uh, respects uh, higher structure uh, because I mean, C tau as an extra structure is a motivic infinity ring spectrum. And uh, um, in our case also, we have similar picture because uh, I mean, this is easy even in our case due to results by Luri because we have that the unit map, so the, the map from the sphere to the isotropic sphere spectrum, um, so exhibits chi as an idempotent important of uh, SHK. So we have a stable infinity category and we have that this map from the unit. It, uh, I mean, if we apply the isotropic realization function, it just becomes uh, an isomorphism. And um, okay, and then by, yeah, we just write by Luri. We get first that chi is a motivic infinity ring spectrum. Okay. And moreover, uh, I have that uh, the isotropic stable motivic homotopy categories is identified as a stable infinity category with the chi mod, so models over this isotropic sphere spectrum. Um, right, and then, I mean, uh, I will not say uh, much more, but then um, we get that the isomorphism here, uh, maybe can go back. This isomorphism here, which in principle is only additive, uh, is enriched with higher structure because here we get some higher structure coming from the fact that chi is now an infinite ring spectrum. And here we have higher structure given by Yoneda product and massy products. And we have that, that, I mean, this higher structure is preserved by this isomorphism. So we get a complete identification. Okay. Okay, now the natural question, since we do have this this thing is maybe to look at the cellular part of the uh, of the isotropic uh, stable motivic homotopy category. So we just look at the localizing subcategory generated by suspensions of the isotropic uh, sphere spectrum. And I mean, if the analogy with C tau is preserved, we should expect this to be algebraic somehow. So sort of yeah, derived category of some category of comodules or similar. 
Um, well, uh, I will say too much about this. Maybe, yeah, maybe just uh, so. How does kind mod cell look like? Okay, so the strategy is uh, to first uh, look at the motivic Brown-Peterson spectrum. Uh, clearly, well, at the prime two, I would say, always work, yeah, at prime two. Okay, just denote this by M. BP. And then by using the uh, isotropic Adam spectral sequence, it is possible to uh, compute the isotropic homotopy groups of MVP. So this is identified with F2, so very simple. And also, one can compute the isotropic stable motivic homotopy groups of MVP smash MVP. Yeah, essentially the isotropic MBP homology of MBP. These are, yeah. This is Twister star. Uh, well, the Twister star is the dual, uh, the dual of the, yeah, of the topological serial algebra because at the end the G was identified with the topological serial algebra. So, well, it's an algebra structure over F2 given by C1, C2, etc. Right. And well, uh, this can be obtained by using isotropic isotropic Adams uh, spectral sequence plus a similar reduction uh, as for the uh, case of the spheres. So from models over the isotropic stereo algebra to models over the uh, topological stereo algebra. Um, okay, and then one can look at uh, the, uh, yeah, the category chi smash MVP mod cell. I'm sorry, I somehow missed. The first isomorphism that you say that it has homotopy groups only in one by degree? Yeah. Yeah, it's just F2 concentrated in by degree zero, zero. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can uh, write a bit an argument for this if you want. No, oh, I'm. Yeah, if it is short, then please write. Yeah, I mean, I can uh, sketch it a bit. So the, um, the idea is that, uh, yeah, in order to apply the, this isotropic uh, Adam spectral sequence, well, yeah, we, we have to compute text. From the uh, isotropic motivic homology of this spectrum to yeah, the other point, essentially. Yeah. This converges to Okay. So now one can prove that this is isomorphic to is tensor product. So remember that the, the I mean, the isotropic uh, motivic steroid algebra was this tensor uh, with the Milner subalgebra. And I mean, uh, Brown-Peterson spectrum uh, kind of kills like the, the Milner part. So this, I mean, it's pretty expectable also uh, from topology. And then and now we get uh, we get the um, the simplification the reduction that uh, we used before. I mean we can go. So here we have a G module. In here also we have a G module. Uh, it's just tensor over F two with F two, and uh, with trivial action of Milner operations. And uh, here I mean the isotropic zero algebra. So this is identified with X over G star star. 
of g star star f2. Yeah, but I mean, g star star is, is free over g star star, so this is just, well, whatever to write here. It's just always at the end. So we get, yeah, it's just F2 in by degree zero, zero, and all the rest is trivial. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it fits correct, but <laughs> till now, I think, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised because usually when we compute this homotopy guys, then we have, I mean, if something is not trivial, then it is non trivial for the whole diagonal or for a part of a diagonal. Yeah. Because of taking this minus ones, but yeah. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, if, if this is correct, it should be, I mean, it's a bit surprising uh, because of course it's very simple and then it, it actually implies that the, the whole uh, category, this one, this chi is smash MDP mod cell is very simple at the end. Well, maybe I can write it here. It's, if we take just this, as our star, then here we go from here to F2 uh, vector spaces, well, by graded maybe, but, but it says that this is uh, an equivalence of categories. So yeah, yeah. this part is very simple. Uh, yes, yeah. But at the end, applying this, this chi really like simplifies uh, lots of things just by, yeah. So yeah, if it's correct. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we get first this uh, part, right? And then, okay, and then what then? Um, right, then we can construct an isotropic Adams Novikov spectral sequence. Okay, and well, the idea is that we'll just take maybe y in, uh, in this chi mod cell. Maybe we put some boundness, yeah. Then we have an E2 page, which is given by x over g. from the MVP homology of X, the MVP homology of Y, this converges to, uh, to what? To map from T minus S suspension U of X to Y. Well, here to be fair, there should be some completeness. Well, there should be some MVP completeness, but for isotropic spectra, MVP completeness is the same as H zero two completeness. Um, yeah, but yeah, let's write it this way. Okay, now one can consider, I mean, this slope to line, and then uh, we can consider some spectra in. Um, yeah, in chi mod cell, which have um, MVP homology concentrated above. Oh, sorry, no, this is not what I wanted to write. So above this slope to line and then below this slope to line. And then on the slope to line, we just use this symbol. So uh, the first thing by using these isotropic Adams Novikov spectral sequence, essentially these techniques are, uh, are the same that were used by um, Georg van Zou to, to prove the result on the, on the C tau uh, cellular models. And they are just adapted to the isotropic case. Yeah, once you know what to substitute with. Um, but essentially, by using this uh, isotropic Adam Novikov's, uh, Adam's Novikov spectral sequence, one can MVP with this functor, which goes from chi mod cell to be precise, I should put H zero to complete. Then here we put this art, which means just with MVP homology concentrated on this slope to line, 
then this goes to uh, to what to this star star comodules. These are by graded, but at the end they are just concentrated on this Chernobyl of degree zero. So with this, yeah, this notation, this is an equivalence of category. Right, and then one can prove that I mean this is actually uh, provides this category chi mod cell with the yeah with the T structure whose heart is given by I mean by this and so uh, since we have this isomorphism uh, since we have this identification is just the uh, yeah the category of G co modules right remember that this is just by the way identified with uh, A star comodules. So just comodules over the topological, over the dual of the topological serial algebra. Okay, uh, yes. And then, uh, I mean, one can apply some Luris result criterion, which if some, uh, I mean, uh, some morphisms from, from, yeah, from greater or equal than zero to minus or equal than zero. I mean, it's just, there are some vanishing things that are satisfied. And uh, we have that this herd is a, um, it's a billion category like this, then we can, we obtain an identification of chi mod uh, cell H to mod to complete, uh, yeah, bounded to be precise identification as stable infinity category with uh, the derived category. Uh, yes, of A star commodities. So at the end, at the end, this completes a bit the analogy with the theta picture, uh, because we get that the cellular part of the isotropic uh, stable modulic homotopy category is identified with this uh, this triangulated category, which is at the end algebraic, is just the direct category of some commodules over the uh, you know, topological stereo algebra. So we get this complete picture. Now, an interesting thing would be also to understand what happens for the um, isotropic category of modems, which was, I mean, uh, being constructed by uh, by Dish, sorry. And uh, try to understand if also in that case the Tate part, I mean the, the cellular part of it is, is yeah, can be a kind of uh, interpreted in this yeah, in some similar way, I mean in an algebraic way, but yeah, I don't have done many um, uh, progress in that direction, so yeah, I cannot say much more. Yeah, maybe the only thing that I can say is that if we uh, for example consider uh, cellular isotropic spectra, and then we apply the motivic functor. Uh, we get some particular uh, Tate motives, and then ohms between these Tate motives is expressed just as ohms uh, of modules over the isotropic cohomology of the point. But then the yeah the the isotropic motivic cohomology of this uh, isotropic cellular spectra is just a free module over the isotropic motivic cohomology of the point. So this should help somehow. But uh, yeah, still. It's not clear. Well, yeah, I think this is everything I wanted to say. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And, yeah. yeah, thank you very much for your interesting talk. Yes. Are there any questions? Okay, then I have some more. So first question is, uh, Suppose that uh, your flexible field was say complex numbers with, I mean, complex yeah. numbers with infinite number um, of uh, yeah. stuff mm -hmm. added. Uh, then you have this C tau, right, in that uh, setting. And you probably have MF from C tau to this chi, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is it true? Yeah, I don't know, I didn't. Think about uh, so uh, you mean okay this situation at the beginning. Um, yeah, again, uh, if we have this uh, like flexible closure of C, uh, so we yeah. we kind of yeah we can have some. Uh, I mean, we have uh, non-trivial elements in the in the Milner theory, so I don't know if we get this map tau here. Uh, 
into the sphere spectrum. But I'm not entirely sure because, uh, yeah, if, if I understand it correctly, this comes from the fact that, uh, well, tau is, uh, yeah, in Adam's filtration zero, in this X, and uh, by degree reasons, it cannot be involved in any, uh, yeah, in any differential, uh, because there are no, no higher Milner Kizieri stuff, I would say, in C. But if we extend C, with this flexible closure, we put all this T1, T2, then it can happen. I mean, I, probably, I mean, probably it's also there because I said that there's more general picture for this, so. Yeah, yeah I mean, okay, so suppose for a second then this is, yeah. it is there. But it could be, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Then, um, the, uh, okay. Sense. Okay. So, uh, so what? So, so maybe yeah. I have, uh, I have this, I have this thing and uh, this is tau. And since this is zero, I get the map here. Probably. Yes, and um, do you think that it is an, I mean, it is that chi is a infinity algebra over C tau? Uh, well, uh, and I mean, the, 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 the result about this. Uh, Algebraic structure that something is a commodal of something, then could, could it be just some base change? I mean, for some change of coefficients from yes. BP to. Yeah, I mean, if we have. To HZ. Yeah, I mean, if we consider just the. the yeah, for example, this op algebra, the BP star BP, and uh, do we have a map from the. From the dual of the topological steroid algebra to this, uh, probably. Well, I would, I, I don't know, but yeah, but maybe it is the case. I mean, one of the first look at this, uh, like map, um, yeah, some artificial map here between uh, X of the, uh, yeah, yeah, but it should be from this to the topological steroid algebra. So, um, yeah, I mean, some kind of map similar to the map from MGL to HZ. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see, I see what you mean, yeah. It could be, yeah, I didn't think about it. I would definitely, yeah, do. Yeah, okay, and another question, uh, a very vague one. So you have this uh, isotropic category and you can also look at the cell obje cellular objects in the whole SH. And then you can see what happens uh, to the cellular objects in the isotropic category. Mm -hmm. Is it, I don't know, conservative or can you say that it kills some cellular objects or something like this? Uh, I mean, what, what is the relation between cellular objects in SH of K and in the isotropic category? Okay, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, like cellular objects of uh, SHK are sent to, if we smash just with chi, we obtain cellular objects in, I guess, in, yeah. in the isotropic uh, motivic category. So, uh, but cellular, uh, yeah, I mean, cellular, they should be preserved because, I mean, uh, smashing with chi really acts on the isotropic part. So, I mean, yeah, it's cellular things which are built from spheres, uh, I guess they should be a kind of preserved. Nothing should be killed, but this is just a feeling. I, I don't know, I think. Yeah, of course, the feeling is that, I mean, yeah. they, they have rational points. They are the most rational varieties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, they have. yeah, so, well, maybe, yeah, say that, 
yeah, we we'll see that maybe it is conservative, but yeah, again, maybe a bit more care should be, but yeah, probably yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Any more questions? I've got a small question, um, mm -hmm. but unrelated to this seller stuff. So in this uh, work of uh, Bachmann and authors that you mentioned, which generalizes yeah. the Georgis mm -hmm. work, yeah. so they don't only study the cellular objects, yes. but they also can say something about, so there is some weight structure and they can say something about the morphisms between um, smooth projective varieties in the heart of this weight structure. And the question is, can you say anything at all about uh, how um, smooth projective varieties uh, about morphism between most projective varieties in the isotropic category? Yeah, uh, I have to say that at the moment, no, but uh, yeah, that's the idea. Uh, yeah, it would be nice to, to see, well, to continue this parallelism also in this work by Bachmann, Kober, Wang Zhu. And so, uh, well, I would like to do recently, it was just, uh, um, yes. Uh, I was just doing some computation with, for example, field extensions. And, uh, um, and yes, yeah, so for example, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Pavel, do you need uh, computations in DM? And do you want to shift this uh, uh, smooth projective varieties or just consider yeah. your model? For the start, I don't want them to be shifted. Uh, because I think so if be... you don't sh shift, then the answer is quite simple. You should just kill all the morphisms that uh, pass uh, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, in through DM. anisotropic uh, varieties. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. Vishik's uh, computation in yeah. DM. This is uh, like anisotropic Chow groups, or I don't remember how they're called. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, it's anisotropic Chow. Uh, but for, uh, the question was about the sage. So. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so now I mean that's the that's probably what I would, uh, yeah. Okay, so it also should work for MJL modules in the same way. I don't know whether something falls for a sage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Too much. I mean, for for field extension, I I know yes something about because I was just playing with these small cases. So for yeah, for like extension of even degree is clearly zero because yeah, it's it's anisotropic. But then for odd degree, it seems that it's just the answers for uh, yeah, like usual uh, stable. Uh, Motivic homotopy groups, isotropic stable motivic homotopy groups of the sphere spectrum. Uh, purely transcendental extension also should be fine by uh, the fact that we are assuming the base field flexible. But again, I'm not entirely sure on these things. I don't have yeah kind of fixed idea on this. I'll definitely see if something can be done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. The related question to the things that you mentioned, uh, can you say anything about the shifts of uh, homotopy groups? I mean, you just computed its global sections, right? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so now the idea uh, for me to proceed on this direction, but at, uh, yeah, at this stage, I don't have uh, much more about this. I'm not entirely sure I did this, but it should work for this for fields, but uh, yeah, still didn't, uh, yeah, computed more of this. Yeah. Okay. This, this appeared in the in an attempt of, uh, yeah, because Tom Bachman suggested me that uh, there could be the possibility that this guy is also at a complete. So, uh, yeah, so in, in an attempt of, uh, of understanding with this eta completeness. So I was doing this sort of computation and so for, for yeah, for field extension, I think uh, I got yeah, more or less the picture, but yeah, still need to see what happens for other things.
but thank you. I would.